Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Butler Christian, and for those that are watching from home, we welcome you as well. I do have a few announcements. Uh, we do have golf tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Um, next week, we will be having church in the Butler Community Park at 11 o'clock. There will be no Sunday school, and there will be a potluck dinner to follow. Uh, and with us meeting down there, we won't have a board meeting next week. We'll, we'll have it the following week. Is there other, any other announcements as far as announcements go? Let us go to Lord in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another Lord's Day. We thank you for all those that have come here today to sing together, to pray together, and to hear the word of the Lord together. Dear Lord, let us be with those that are not here for whatever the reason may be for those that are traveling. Dear Lord, we just give them traveling mercies, watch over them, keep them safe, and bring them back to us next week. Dear Lord, as we look to our prayer list, we, we ask for physical healing for those that need physical healing and, and spiritual healing for those that need spiritual healing and, and mental healing for those that, that need mental healing. And dear Lord, we, we just know that you are the greatest physician of all, and if it is thy will, we know that you can lay your hands upon them and, and restore them. And, whatever fashion they need. Dear Lord, if, if it's not your will, uh, we just pray for peace and comfort for each of those individuals. For those that have lost loved ones uh, this week, we just ask that, that you be with them as, as they grieve the loss of a loved one and as, as there's an empty place at the table or in the living room or wherever they may be, wherever they may go, dear Lord, just just be with those that are left behind to cope with the loss of a loved one. We pray that, that you are close to them this during this time and that they can feel your presence. Dear Lord, we also pray for, for those that do not know you or may even despise you. that the light has gone out within them. Dear Lord, we just pray that, that you will send the light to them through one of us, that, that we may rekindle that light and show them that the light is good and, and tell them why we are Christians and, and why we look to the light for peace and comfort and strength as we go through our daily lives and that we may pull them from darkness into the light and all these things I ask in the name of Jesus Christ as we pray. Amen. Let us give thanks for the offering that was received this week. Dear Lord, we do thank you for the offering and, and the opportunity to give and we just, dear Lord, as we give to you and we just ask for blessings upon this offering and, and for those that have given it so freely. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we come to the table, and as later I will be talking about probably one of the most familiar passages and that's the feeding of the 5,000. So as we come around the table this morning to be fed, uh, maybe not so much physically, but uh, most definitely to be fed spiritually, let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're really thankful for this day. 
We're thankful for the opportunity for you to have to come around this church. And take a good look at your symbolic and fresh work in the body. We suffered, bled, and died in the cross of Calvary. So we may have life and have our last week. For all the answers that we take of this love, you will help us to realize the great sacrifice that you made for each and every one of us. And we will become a better servant to you. We thank you for your prayers. On that night in the upper room, when Jesus took the bread, he blessed it and he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you, and as often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are again thankful for the opportunity to come around this blood table. And as we do so, Father, we ask that you will help us to realize all the great walks that you've had in your son to give up his life on the cross of Calvary. And as we come around this Sunday, we can think of this cup and symbolic of Christ's blood. We ask that you will guide our and direct us in all that we do. And we ask in Christ's name. Amen. And in a like manner, Jesus also took the cup and cup, saying, This is the spilled blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. And as often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me, and drink ye all of it. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. And after this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. And a great, cow, a great crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. And Jesus went up into the mountain, sat down there with the disciples. Now the Passover... The festival of the Jews was near, and when he looked up, he saw a large crowd coming toward him. And Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for those people to eat? And he said this to test them. For himself he knew what he was going to do. And Peter answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. And one of the disciples, Andrew, uh, Simon Peter's brother said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? And Jesus said, Make all the people sit down. And now there was a great deal of grass in this place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. And then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to those who were seated, and also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they were satisfied, he told the disciples, Gather up the fragments and the leftovers, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left, those who had eaten, had eaten and they filled 12 baskets. May God richly bless the reading and understanding of the Holy Word. Bringing the old life with you. Motorhome and Campers has put all of the conveniences of homes on wheels. And I think Frank and Dee just come back from one of those such places. A camper no longer needs to contend with sleeping bags and cooking over a fire and hauling water from the stream. No, they can park a fully equipped home on a cement plaid in the midst of a few pines where they can hook up to a water line, a sewer line, and electricity. Some motor homes even have satellite dishes atop so no more to bother with the dirt, nor the smoke from the fire, nor the drudgery of walking to the stream. Now it is possible to go camping without ever going outside. When you buy a motor home with the hope of seeing new places or getting out into the world, yet we deck it out with the same furnishings that is in our homes. Thus, nothing really changes. We drive to a new place, set ourselves in a new surrounding,
but the newness goes unnoticed, for we have only carried along our old settings. The adventure of a new life in Christ begins when the comfortable patterns of the old life are left behind. Um, that could be a sermon there. We could close it off and go home because that is so fitting that we get into comfortable patterns and thus we don't as we talked about in Sunday school we don't allow that spirit to grow we don't exercise that spirit today is a very familiar scripture I'm sure we've all heard it and many sermons upon it and it's kind of like one of those old Andy Griffith reruns. Oh, it's that one again. And you know how the ending is. Well, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John all <clears throat> speak of this story. But it's only John that tells us of the boy with the five loaves and the two fish. So is it, is it important that we know that detail here in John today? Or is it only important of what Jesus did with the bread and the, and, and the fish? Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. The title sermon, picture this, and, and I don't know if Casey or Brian, whoever picked that uh, out, but, but that's the perfect setting of what we are going to do today. We are, I want you to look at this story through each of the individuals uh, that are in this story. We're going to take a look at the characters. We're going to first look at, um, at the disciples. And we're going to look through the eyes of the disciples and see what they saw. Jesus was testing them. Um, to see where they were at. You know, I know a teacher will test someone to see what progress they have made. And then if they pass that test, then you move on a little bit further. And if, if, if you fail the test, then you regress and you go back and you reteach what they haven't learned. So Jesus is testing these disciples. They're tired and they're wanting to go somewhere to rest. They're going to a mountain to rest. But when they get there, they have company. So what do you do when you have company? Casey talked a little bit about this this morning in Sunday school. What do you do if company's coming over? Well, first you clean your house. Make sure that it's presentable. <clears throat> And then if you go visit Billy and Debbie, you have to eat uh, brownies and, and ice cream. They twisted my arm. It's just a terrible thing to have to do. But you have to feed them. And then I'm sure after we left, Debbie cleaned up because Billy's got to hold his head down. So Billy had, or Debbie had to do the cleaning. You clean up what is left. And there were 12 baskets that were left. So how is there 12 baskets when uh, I'm sure this little boy carried his lunch or dinner or whatever meal that he was eating in a small basket probably um, with, a, with a cloth napkin or, or a piece of cloth to cover the food over so the flies wouldn't bother it. I mean, we got to think where we're at. We're in a hot atmosphere. It's outside. The fish had been cooked, the, the, um, the bread has been cooked, but we're still outside. So how was there so much left over after they eat, had eaten all they wanted? It's because of the faith that they had in Jesus Christ. Now let's take a look at that second point and we're, as we're looking at the crowd. As we're, we're seeing through the eyes of the crowd. And, and why did they come to this deserted place? Why would, they, why would they go clear out to the foot of a mountain? Well, it's because they had seen what Jesus had done. They had seen the miracles 
of healing the sick. And they wanted to be healed. So they, they followed along the edge of the Sea of Tiberias as, as Jesus was, was going to this mountain. And they followed along and they kept him within sight until, until he docked his boat there in the mountain. You see, they, they wanted to be fed physically and spiritually, but more spiritually so than, than physically. I'm sure that they weren't thinking about getting food. They were thinking about having their needs, their physical needs, but, but not through food, but through miracles of, of curing their illnesses. So now let's take a look at the little boy. And I think this is, a, um, this is an interesting uh, take. The trip that they took was not one that was planned. <clears throat> it just kind of happened. So where was this little boy going uh, that particular day uh, before he got sidetracked as little boys do, uh, kind of get led astray. So where had, was he going? Wherever he was going, he was prepared to be gone for a while because I'm sure his mother packed this meal for him or, or maybe he was a good little boy and he ran home and he said, Mom, I'm, I'm following the crowd and I'm following this man named Jesus Christ to this mountain. And she said, well, you're going out in the middle of nowhere. I better give you some food to take with you. Um, that would have been the, the best thing to do, but I'm not sure that that's what happened. The story doesn't tell us. But anyway, he came prepared. He was the only one that came prepared for a picnic lunch on the grass. And, and John makes reference that there was a great deal of grass. And if, if you're thinking about the place that, that we're at here, if, if you look at it geography-wise, it's a desert, most of it. But he said, in this particular place, place there was a great deal of grass. So, so Jesus asked them to sit down. And, and then they come to this little boy. And can you imagine uh, someone coming to him and said, would you share your meal with these people? He was thinking, well, there went dinner. I'm not going to get much if, but the time we share all of this. <clears throat> So now let's take a look at Jesus. And we're going through these very quickly because this is a familiar story and, and I wanted to, to take it and look at it in a, in a different light. So as we look through the eyes of Jesus, Jesus had just been told about the beheading of John the Baptist. And, and he was going to grieve just as you would go to grieve when you lost someone that you loved. He was going out in the wilderness to a deserted place, not only to get some rest, but to, to get some spiritual rest, to, to clear his mind and, and to grieve the death of John the Baptist. But it says that he had compassion upon them. So he put his problems aside and had compassion for them. So he was showing the crowd by feeding them physically that he was not only going to take care of their spiritual needs, but also their physical needs. He was taking care of all their needs. He didn't tell them to just eat a little. He said, eat all you want till you are full. Eat until you are full. He wanted no crack for Satan to enter in. He didn't want someone to go home and, and say, well, well, Jesus cured the sick, but he didn't feed us. He sent us home hungry. What kind of a, what kind of a guy would do that? So he's taking care of them in every way that they can. 
I think we can draw a comparison and as it's funny that as as we read the scriptures in the lectionary and as Casey taught this morning on Ephesians and as Paul is trying to write to the Ephesians and, and trying to explain what the Spirit is that has just been given to them and that it has no height or depth or breadth or width. I think that's where Jesus, we can draw a comparison today is that they were in a deserted place. And sometimes we feel like we're in a deserted place. But no matter where we are, we always know that Jesus is with us. Whether at the highest height or the lowest low. Um, and I know some of us has experienced both of those this week. And, and He is always with us. All we have to do is, is just call upon His name. So as we close for another week, I want you to think about this this week. Practice looking, and this this is uh, this is a good uh, this is a good exercise. Practice looking through the eyes of others. You may not be able to understand, but you can see. Amen. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, as we leave this place and as we go out into our daily lives, let us take the Spirit of the Lord that has been given to us and, and let us spread it among the masses. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.